Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Advancement Live. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ryan Catherwood coming to you from the grounds of the University of Virginia. Advancement Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network, a series of professional development web shows about development, alumni affairs, uh, and communications in the alumni space. My partner and I, Andrew Gosen, up at Cornell University, try to put on a good edition of Advancement Live on 1 o'clock Tuesdays, twice a month, usually the second and fourth Tuesday of each month. I've got a really great show for you guys today. Before I introduce our guests, I want to make sure everybody is tuning in to Twitter on the back channel. And any questions that you'd like to ask today's panelists, please use the hashtag HigherEdLive, and we'll try to get that question in today for you. Also, if you're not receiving the Higher Ed Live newsletters, you can do that by subscribing on the Higher Ed Live website. Uh, and you can also uh, check out the podcast by going to iTunes and downloading uh, the podcast app from that place. Um, of course, Advancement Live would not be what it is without our sponsors. Advancement Live uh, is brought to you by iModule Software, which is the leading constituent engagement management provider for educational institutions iModules delivers an integrated online platform, transforming how institutions strengthen constituent relationships and achieve fundraising success. And Advancement Live is produced by M. Stoner, a marketing and communications firm that works with educational institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and more. Check out M. Stoner's latest groundbreaking book, Follow the Leader, authored by Dan Fiance and edited by Michael Stoner. It's filled with insights, anecdotes, and profiles of leaders who have successfully used social media in the roles as college and university presidents. This book offers sound advice and uh, novices and experts alike for, and for those who advise them. Uh, and I tweeted out a link uh, both to iModules and to the great book Follow the Leader on uh, the Twitter feed for Higher Ed Live. Okay, so uh, it is my pleasure at this point to introduce a tremendous panel of guests that I couldn't be more thrilled about. How is everybody doing out there? Keith, JT, Jade, and Jeff, what's going on? We're doing great, Ryan. Glad Good to be part of this. Thank you. Glad to have you all. Jade, how are you from across the ocean? Good. It's dark and it's a bit cold here, but it's fine. It's all good. I'm pleased to be here. Well, we're pleased to have you too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read bios, uh, starting off with Mr. J.T. Forbes, whether from senior positions with global companies or universities, J.T. Forbes has made a career of being a catalytic connect of people and ideas in his dual role as CEO of the Indiana University Alumni Association and President of the Council of Alumni Association Executives. He is leading the advancement field towards even more meaningful, measurable, and alumni-centered approaches to institutional advancement. Great to have you on the show, JT. Thanks. It's great to be here. Um, I just want to mention that my colleague Paula Bonner is president of the CAE. I'm just her servant as vice president. So forgive the typo in any. Oh, very good. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dr. Jeff Shantz has nearly 20 years' experience in higher education and is currently the assistant vice president for alumni relations at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and is executive director of the Rensselaer Alumni Association. In this capacity, he has significantly grown alumni engagement by strengthening lifelong relationships between the university and its 100,000 alumni worldwide. Jeff is presently presiding, the pre presiding officer over the Association of Private College and University Alumni Directors. Jeff, that is uh, PCA, uh, PCUAD. Uh, thank you for joining us today. No problem, it's Pequod. Thanks for having us, Ryan. Pequod. <laughs> And Jeff uh, managed to escape the brunt of the nor'easter that uh, blasted New England, uh, and we're really pleased to have him on the show today. Thanks. Jade Bressington, my friend, is currently the Deputy Head of Alumni Relations at the University of Birmingham in the UK, where she is responsible for leading a devolved alumni relations team within the College of Social Sciences. Jay's role focuses on developing relationships with senior alumni who are able to support the ambitions of the college in a voluntary capacity, and she leads on the development, planning, and delivery of the college's alumni relations strategy, as well as being responsible for a number of university-wide initiatives, including the development of our uh, of the development and alumni activity in Southeast Asia. 
Dade is a proud alum of the University of Birmingham and is looking forward to taking on a 12-month secondment as head of campaign development. That's great, Jade. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. And last but of course not least, coming uh, from the Mountain West, Keith Liu at Brigham Young University is a results-driven innovator and strategic thinker with broad experience in high tech and education, higher education. Prior to his move to higher ed, Keith worked as a marketing manager and workforce planner for Microsoft. This unique blend of boardroom and classroom experience offers a customer-focused, insightful, global perspective with a passion for lifelong learning and continuous involvement Keith makes a difference wherever he serves. I have no doubt about that. Uh, and he continues to serve, of course, for the great people out at Brigham Young University. Keith, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. OK, well, thank you for everyone for sticking around through the sponsors and, of course, uh, in the introduction of my great panelists. Let's get right to it, guys. Um, JT, I want to start with you because we really wanted to introduce the show uh, as far as uh, adding some context to it by thinking about the, the document that that you had published um, not too long back about adding a, a taxonomy to uh, alumni engagement. And could you talk a little bit about that CAA document and, and what you were looking to provide folks as far as what it is we do and why? Sure. The document that we posted to our WordPress site, alumniexecutiveforum.org, is where you can find that, is really an invitation to a conversation. The Council of Alumni Association Executives is a group of the chief alumni relations officers um, that serve more than 16 million alumni um, from some of the largest of universities in North America. And we're working with Case, Pequot, Advancement Practitioners, and really any others concerned about the tradition of alumni engagement uh, to really elevate uh, the discussions and deepen understanding of both the practice and, um, and tradition of alumni engagement that's now well over 100 years old in the United States. So the paper has its origins in a meeting of the IU Alumni Association Executive Council in 2010, where we basically looked at the thousand odd events on our calendar and literally put each on a three by five card and sorted them into like piles. Out of that came kind of nine categories of things we were doing before that day as kind of one off activities as opposed to comprehensive kind of strategic functions um, to achieve our mission and purpose. The conversation about that work um, expanded last summer when this work was included in a white paper that was shared with the CAA membership at our meeting in New York. And actually, as we put that paper together, this piece was actually excerpted because the paper was a little long. And um, we put it up on our WordPress site with the other larger document that we crowdsourced, really a statement to the field. And what's interesting is that this is the one that really seemed to strike chord with a lot of folks in the field. It really lays out a way to think about what we do um, that takes from a broad definition and turns it into a set of organized functional activities. And really, it's a uh, discussion piece that we hope will invite a lot of conversation and really elevate the discussion and get us seriously thinking about how uh, alumni relations works and needs to be sustained into the future. Yeah. And, and it was a great read and definitely sparked some great conversations, uh, particularly over on LinkedIn after uh, Andy Shanlin posted a blog post about it. And there was a number of different folks chimed in. And the idea for today's show really stemmed from um, taking a look at those conversations and then wanting to get an idea as to how different folks around the world, in this case in the US and UK, think about alumni engagement. Because it's probably a little bit different depending on what institution you work for. Um, Jade, could you talk a little bit about uh, you know, the definition of alumni engagement at the University of Birmingham, and, and, and you know, does that definition synergize or differ from some of the other definitions that you're familiar with about alumni engagement? Yeah, so um, reading through the paper, it's uh, very similar to the kind of areas that we are looking at. Um, I think it's very similar in terms of um, what we're trying to achieve. I think we've just separated it maybe into um, stages of engagement. So we talk about initially establishing um, a community. So that's kind of the, the reference would be about building pride, um, developing a community, developing a pool of alumni that feel an immediate affinity to the institution. And I think, I don't think some of those affinities or some of that thing might be less in the UK, but it's certainly less established in the populace that we would have that strength. To an institution, maybe 
it's more accepted in the US. So we're starting kind of often on the, the back foot slightly there. We have to kind of engender that rather than make it um, expectations. Um, we then just try and, and look at the, the various different ways that they see the outline really in terms of how we then engage alumni in the institution. So whether that's through um, student experience, um, so embedding alumni into the curriculum, getting them to come in and offer guest lectures, um, helping them to part our students through employability initiatives like mentoring, offering placements, that kind of thing. Um, and also in areas um, outlined as well around student recruitment. Um, so that, that's really important for us, that more ambassadorial type element. And then what we're really trying to do is, is to embed that across the institutions. The value of alumni relations has to be reinforced all the time. We aren't as established um, a, a kind of a professional service as um, maybe in the US. So we are very much looking on um, developing and working on initiatives for real, tangible, visible impact back to the future so that yeah. we can actually um, say at all times that we are making a direct contribution to the I was really interested, Jade, in when we were, we were talking about the, the show in advance, you know, your sort of thoughts about because the program at uh, in some of the universities in the UK, as you noted, is sort of less mature. You know, it, it enables you to be a little more connected to the specific measurable goals associated with some of the university's key priorities. And that got me thinking, of, you know, does that mean some of the more mature programs here in the United States have managed to lose sight of, of some of those um, specific and measurable priorities associated with the university and, and its outcomes. Uh, could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, sort of your definition of alumni engagement at uh, BYU and how that synergizes maybe with others? I know you have a little different approach to it. Sure. So I had an opportunity to read the taxonomy document and, and um, you know, it, it looked very familiar to me. Um, I would say how we're maybe slightly different is is that our focus is on how do we build quality connections and uh, you know that's our definition of engagement it, it is building a quality connection that is measurable these connections need to be personal emotional and reciprocal and that's that's where we believe that uh, we're going to start making a difference is making sure that our connections have mutual benefit uh, I think uh, the tradition of at least the work we've done here at BYU has been um, being very focused on how we can cultivate a gift from our alumni. Uh, I think that uh, where we're going to place our emphasis now is making sure that our connections are uh, quality and we're looking at ways that we can actually measure the quality of our connections. And that's a really interesting way of looking at it too, Keith. And as we sort of talked about, what you're sort of building is a is an ambassador program uh, through your alumni, and it's a great way to think of what we do here at the university is developing loyal ambassadors, spread word of mouth uh, about our initiatives and our priorities. JT, what do you think? You know, what's what's I know we talked we know a little bit more uh, than most about your definition, of course, of of alumni engagement. Does it differ, or, or is it synergized with some of the other ones that you've been hearing? Yeah, I think what we put together here is really one that recognizes the definitions of alumni engagement vary by the, um, well, they're actually as diverse and varied as the institutional cultures from which they're derived. And it's the varieties of those experiences that are really important. What we tried to do in this definition is put something out there that provided a broad and inclusive and holistic view of alumni engagement. In the, in the world that I live in, in the, among a lot of these larger institutions, over time in some cases, they've kind of evolved where there's the, the friend raising arm, which to me is a dirty word, and the fundraising arm. And they've existed as kind of separate. And, and what we're finding is people are beginning to see, especially at the kind of institutions in the Big Ten and beyond, where we have to approach this as if we're building a culture of commitment the institution. And we think this definition recognizes that we steward gifts of time, talent, and treasure. You know, as the former government relations lead for Indiana University, um, I saw the power of alumni connections in helping us the state house a few times. And so that's a gift of, of connections and talent and time as much as a gift. You know, the, the base budget from the 
the state of Indiana, the Indiana University, is well over half a billion dollars. So we've got to steward those relationships carefully because they do match up with the bottom line. And so this definition was really done to get us thinking and talking about this. Because in fact, if there's a threat to the tradition of alumni engagement in the United States, it's a little bit of our fault as the leaders. Because I don't think we're taking enough time to really step back and intentionally and thoughtfully define what we're doing and how we do it so that we can actually develop a field of practice around this. It's largely a vocation. And um, you know the work that Keith and others are doing is powerful because I think it's really beginning to pull us together to say, how do we really articulate the value and meaning of this both to our alumni and to the institutions we serve? Yeah, I think I think that you're right. And you know, bringing in Jeff on this one, Jeff, you know, um, from an institutional standpoint, are gifts of time or talent really as important as gifts of treasure? I mean, I think that ultimately, depending, of course, whether you work for a university advancement office or an alumni association, you may have a different take on that. But you know why or why not? Well, um, first of all, you know Ryan, just to comment just really quickly on CAAE and yeah. JT and the work that they've done, I think is is good because I think it started this discussion and um, it, it, we in Pequod and and being here at RPI, I think we're excited to start talking this through a little bit a little bit more. Um, you know. We grew up in a situation, I think many of the private universities in which the university uh, alumni associations report directly to university advancement leaders and those that are looking at philanthropy. And so I think each university kind of comes at it from a different direction. But there's no mistaking that we have to maintain um, what alumni relations is and define what it is so we can be a part of the success and the solutions for our universities. And so I think that's why this discussion is really important. Um, to answer your question about treasure and talent, um, obviously I think come from an alumni relations standpoint, we're developing um, talent and uh, knowledge capital and volunteers for a whole variety of things that meet the institutional mission at our university. And so whether we're helping with career programs or admissions work or helping with internships or co-ops or developing tremendous philanthropy efforts, I think developing talent is extremely important for the broader mission of the university. And that's why I would say that it's important as much as it's important for treasure because we hope in the end that engagement will lead to what every university needs and that's philanthropy. Right, right. And Jade, I know that um, you know you feel similar, right? You feel as though it's, it's very important to be um, making sure the university is tracking gifts of time of talent and treasure, right? Yeah, yeah. So we um, report back to the registrar on the progress that we're making in our campaign. So that <coughs> Um, always focused on um, the pounds that we bring into the university. But at the highest level, we also report the uh, number and quality of the volunteering that happens. So we're very focused that uh, not all alumni at certain points in, in their life or maybe ever will want to donate financially to the university. And therefore, we would, don't want that to be a barrier to engagement. So we're very focused. We have a volunteer program. We have the goal college uh, alumni relations team who are absolutely focused on identifying alumni that can uh, support in the ways that are both most appropriate to them and most valuable to us. So um, somebody mentoring or uh, offering access to an organization might actually be more valuable as part of our engagement with the body uh, and demonstrating the value and, and therefore kind of setting up that culture of giving as them offering us a, a, a regular gift. Uh, but they do kind of dovetail. We do work very closely with our regular giving and make gift teams to make sure that we're not missing any opportunities or um, making sure that our work is complementary as well. JT, you know, one of the things that Jeff sort of mentioned just a moment ago was the idea that we're hoping to build talent, right? Our programs are really around the idea of harnessing and empowering folks and hoping to make them better and stronger professionals. Uh, and so, but of course, the ultimate goal is we want to make stronger professionals for them, but also because we want them to have the means to donate years down the line. Um, is creating a donor prospect pipeline the ultimate goal of alumni engagement, or is it just one of the desired outcomes when you factor in 
Sure. I mean, there's some of these things that we'd like to cultivate over the short term, but really the ultimate goal over the long term is, is to create donors. Is that fair, or uh, do I miss the mark? And, and does everyone sort of agree around, you know, Indiana, around sort of your take on uh, the desired outcomes? Sure. Really good question. I think the most accurate answer is yes, no, and maybe, depending <laughs> on who you ask. Uh, right. We're a very large decentralized enterprise here. Uh, there is, I think, here and, and many of these large publics, a growing trend that seems to be doubling down on investments in alumni relations that are tied to fundraising returns. Uh, the real opportunity lies by looking at the past and projecting into the future, because they both lead you in the same direction. Uh, I'll cite specific examples. Historically, our most alum engaged alumni tend to be our most engaged donors. In fact, our life members here at Indiana give more on average than any other segment of our alumni body on an annual basis. Um, they're also more likely to be our principal gift, you know, a million and above donors. Uh, what we also know is that we've got to build, the real opportunity here is a culture of commitment that's both about alumni helping alumni, which is a historic legacy of, of what's happened, one that I think sometimes we've wandered a little way away from in some places, maybe even here. And then also the value of giving financially of your time as, as well as your talent and treasure. Institutions need um, the connections that alumni have. Our graduating alumni do too. In fact, all of our research here at Indiana points to the fact that our graduates now, uh, or our students that we're attracting and their families are increasingly looking not only for a world-class, competitive, relevant education, but they also want assurances that the alumni network is there to help their, their, um, their students or themselves navigate and accelerate their career trajectories. So we really put a lot of investment in that, and we're also building a strategy around what we are calling culture of commitment, to really intentionally teach future gener generations of students the value and the importance of taking the coffee or the call with a fellow alum, as well as um, contributing, because it's not one or the other. We have 600,000 alumni worldwide in Indiana. Some are seeking the donor relationship and are likely to do that. Others expect lifelong value. And we really see in Indiana that we've got to serve both if we want to have the legion of donors or the loyal, satisfied following of people that will help us recruit students, influence legislatures and government processes, and really achieve what we need them to achieve to sustain the value and reputation of our degrees. Because really, alumni are the truest test of the va all the claims and aspirations of excellence at our universities. Jade, you know, sort of thinking about um, the University of Birmingham, but then perhaps, you know, a little more broadly as it relates to how the alumni engaged in space has been developing in the UK over the short term. How do folks think about um, alumni engagement? Is it about creating a donor prospect pipeline ultimately, or is it uh, about really other desired outcomes? And you know, would you say that there's consensus at the University of Birmingham as far as uh, you know, these outcomes? Yeah, I think certainly in my time here, uh, we've changed perspective slightly, and that's not necessarily been, um, oh, what's the word, almost deliberate in a way, in so much as when we were quite an immature, quite small unit, our engagement very much was around who are our potential donors and what can we do to engage them. So we had a kind of baseline program of events and communications that would uh, kind of stick to community building boxes, but actually if we were doing anything on a more bespoke individual basis, it would be starting with the donor, working out that, how we can engage them, and, and then kind of implement that. Um, as we've matured, as we've become uh, more conscious of how we represent ourselves almost as being invaluable within the institution, we've very much started to look at stratifying our engagement offering. So, Actually, now we offer engagement opportunities at the highest level. So um, we have an alumni leadership mentoring program where uh, we have about 20 alumni there who are some of our most senior alumni, some of them donors, some of them not. Um, but they include individuals um, such as the chief medical officer, uh, CEO of Sainsbury's, who's uh, which is one of our biggest supermarkets in the UK, uh, Olivia Lloyd, who's directed Mamma Mia, and they really are almost engagement opportunities reserved for the individuals that we want to develop a very strong relationship with the institution. So it is one way in which we start to develop our pipeline, but that 
kind of element of talent and tre uh, treasure are kind of they're mutually reinforcing, but they are also weaknesses as well. Yeah. Keith, uh, thinking about uh, you know success measurements, right, and the idea of alumni engagement, and when is it happening at a high level? You know, how are you measuring alumni engagement, uh, and what's missing from our ability to measure engagement? Three sort of big questions in there, but ultimately it's about how do we know when we're doing this right? Okay, so uh, really um, as we approach measurement here at BYU Alumni, there are really two ways that, that I look at uh, how we measure the quality of our connections. So when I look at uh, what kind of quality connection we provide to the alumni, uh, we have defined or we are defining a quality standard for uh, our connections. And so there are, there are things that we're going to look for, right? What does that quality experience or quality connection look like? And we're going to define that. And it's going to be clear what that experience is going to be like and what are the behaviors of our staff as we offer quality alumni connections. So that's one way that we measure um, the, level of, uh, the level of connections that we have. The other way, which is a, a, a way that uh, you know, we are, are building uh, measurement tools, is we are collecting stories about our alumni. We're trying to find out more about uh, what our alumni are doing today. And we assign a value to that connection. So that's another way that we're measuring the quality of our connection. So and let me give you a simple example. Uh, first of all, we refer to this uh, measurement tool as our CPI. CPI stands for Connected Person Index. And that uh, assigns a value to the connection, quality of the connection, based on the ability of the alumni to provide something back to BYU. Again, we believe that a quality connection is um, uh, mutually beneficial, mutually profitable. So not only do we want to deliver a quality connection to the alumni, but we want uh, that connection back to BYU to be of some quality. This is where we are, um, we created our CPI tool, and that measures the connection based on uh, some values that we identify based on career. What is that career connection? Uh, so that includes uh, a lot of information, but simply uh, what is the job title of the alum? Uh, where does that alum work? So an alum, alumnus that works at a Fortune 500 company in the United States that has a C-level job title is going to receive a higher value than somebody that's not in that position. The other area that we, the other, there's three other areas that we look at. Another area that we look at is uh, with the, what we call celebration, but that simply refers to what level of uh, participation have they had at BYU. So for example, if they participated on the alumni board, if they've participated in what we refer to as our PLC, which is an organization of uh, influential alumni, um, uh, if they participated in a in a college um, advisory board, there are a number of ways that, uh, or uh, probably the, the the simplest example is if we have um, honored that particular alum at a with a university award. That's the celebration score. Uh, the third item is a connection score. So right now we are looking at the level of connection this individual has on the social networks. That's the easiest thing for us to measure. So how are they connected on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? Uh, we will, of course, expand that to much more than that. It's just what we can, kind of information we can gather quickly. Uh, one other interesting idea, well, it's not an idea, we're actually implementing it, um, is that we will use what's called a Wikipedia API, and we'll tap into that Wikipedia API to assign a value to the influence or connectedness of our alumni. Uh, by the way, we eventually, our vision is to share this with everyone as soon as uh, we have kind of uh, uh, operationalized that, but that is our connection measurement. And then the final one is a gift measurement. So we will look at uh, historical giving data. We will look at uh, uh, giving capacity. And there's a lot of numbers that uh, 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 comprise this, this algorithm, if you will, that uh, uh, build what we call a CPI or connected person index. That is our second measurement. So again, we want to measure the quality of the connection that we provide to the alumni, and then we want to measure the quality of the connection that the alumni might be able to provide to BYU. Yeah, it's a lot of good stuff in there. 
Jeff, how about you guys? You know, what, what, uh, how do you know when alumni engagement is happening at a high level at, uh, at RPI? Well, I think the first thing is we have to take a step back and figure out um, from a planning perspective, why are we doing the programs that we're doing? And so what we do is we take a step back and say, all right, we have programs in place and why are we doing them? Based on a model of, that we use is, you know, inform, involve, invest is the model that we use. Many people call it lots of different things, but we try to figure out um, from a viewpoint that we are an enabling organization, helping the university do lots of different things that it needs to accomplish. How can we make things most effective? And so we're, we're constantly meeting and collaborating with our partners in development, um, in athletics, in admissions, and across the university, try to make sure that we're developing programs that kind of fit. And once we do that, then we can do all the great stuff that Keith just enumerated is coding and tracking and making sure that we know um, how we're doing relative to what we did last year and how we're doing relative to our peers. That's one of the great things, I think, of a community of practice like Pequod or like CAE, that we can see how we're doing relative to, to others in the field and learn from each other. So a high level of involvement, I think, has a lot to do with their participation in events and programs, but I also think it is a uh, level of how does it help the university move its mission forward. Yeah. I mean, good stuff in there in terms of ultimately, I wonder, you know, one of the thoughts I had when Keith was, was explaining about the, the CPI was, okay, awesome, and, but is that something that's inputted into the central fundraising database eventually? And because here at the University of Virginia, one of the things we're trying to leverage, of course, is event attendance, right, and the implications as far as the number of times someone comes out versus the amount of time that goes by between engaging for the first time and then volunteering and then you know, eventually it down the road to giving. Jade, how about you guys? You know, how do you measure alumni engagement and, and uh, how do you know when you're doing it right? Mm -hmm. This is actually really timely because um, one of my colleagues was at uh, a meeting last week around how we better measure the impact of what we're doing. So at the moment we do things in a, in a very similar way to the way in which Jeff and, and Keith outlined but what we are kind of have been focused on is about measuring actual engagement. So uh, the number of ways in which um, alumni kind of are in contact with us, uh, make them to an event, uh, whether they volunteer, how much time they offer, what they do. Um, but the sector as a whole, and it's something that we would welcome massively if they starting to look at outcomes. So actually, what is the outcome of that individual, say, offering their time as a mentor? How it basically outlined that a difference has been made because alumni relations activities happen. So, uh, for example, would that then mentor students go on to uh, be a mentor in the future? Is a mentor student more likely to uh, have a graduate level job than a another student who chose not to be a mentee? Uh, and what we're trying to do, I think, is to talk the university language. So actually, as opposed to developing our own measures around engagement, starting to talk when we're doing work about admissions or student recruitment, try to actually define some kind of causal effect between alumni have done this and therefore it's made this difference on X and a number of prospective students applying to the university, uh, X number of students coming, so we're, we're actually talking their language. And I think that the benefit of doing this as a sector as a whole is that we're trying to start to embed the activity, we're starting to try and professionalize kind of the profession um, more effectively in the UK and actually start to develop that kind of uh, statistical significance really. If everybody is looking at certain things in a, in a similar way then we can more effectively benchmark and uh, actually start to lobby uh, universities and other organizations to demonstrate the value of those relations. But that's very embryonic so at the moment, kind of first discussion of that happening. But a number of the Russell Group institutions and another post and post are very interested in exploring this more, more deeply. And I think that there's there's you know challenges in there for all of us, not just you know for you know folks in the UK working to sort of build mature programs, but here in the States where we're trying to assess the impact of all of our work. You know, some of the preliminary data we had here at the University of Virginia shows us that really the strongest correlation between engagement and giving occurs with the young alumni demographic as well as our volunteers. The older that age group, the less correlation there is between being a donor 
having come out to an event and then giving over time, which makes a lot of sense when you think about the ways in the programs that we offer and the amount of time that it takes for someone to come out and participate. Sometimes I think we, we ask for a lot of time, whereas giving a gift could actually be significantly easier. Um, JT, I wanted to ask you about the idea of um, in, a, in a perfect world, right? We're going to wave our magic wand. And we're going to say that money and resources are no object here. Uh, how would you change your current alumni engagement program offerings if you could do anything at all? Well, in Indiana, we've accepted there's no magic wand or rainbow with a pot of gold. So what we've really done is put ourselves on a purposeful race for relevance. We're, we're focusing on what we can do best. We have a culture of failing forward frequently and rapidly. <laughs> and really investing in those areas where we can do the most good. So what's that look like specifically? Well, we use a, a, um, a model of identify, inspire, and involve. And what we really try to do is identify those people seeking a lifelong relationship using propensity modeling and, um, and content marketing and consumer marketing segmentation techniques to really find those individuals. And really on the inspire side, it's delivering content they find relevant and compelling and cultivating their relationship both is either a customer member or donor on that basis and then involve them in the opportunities that align with their interests. Um, we check how we're doing what we're doing because we measure things on the alumni side on a net net basis. We use net promoter outcomes to assess all of our interactions and um, and get feedback both from those who love it and those who hate it um, to really shape um, stronger programs. In fact in the fall we had a net promoter score at the on the programs we offered that was at an Apple level of satisfaction because of that strategy we've implemented over three years. Uh, the other side of the net net basis is net revenue attributable to the experiences and services we offer. So we really pay attention to the bottom line because for us that's also another measure of engagement and satisfaction. Um, we're committed to delivering wildly useful, seriously fun content and experiences that are so good people will pay for them. <laughs> um, and we focus on three domains. Spirit, pride, tradition, which is kind of that emotional, habitual, cultural piece that we're trying to do around helping one another, sharing pride in the institution, speaking well at the school, helping with admissions. Um, professional and career development, um, we're really excited about what we're doing there in partnership with both alumni and companies that do this um, better than we could do it if we built it ourselves. And then really lifelong learning. And we align that content not only according to attitudinal consumer modeling, but across the six seasons of lifetime engagement. Because really, our, we have to serve multiple generations that need different things at different stages. And so we've parsed our alumni into six segments that really in aligning our programming in that direction. Um, we're smaller and smarter. We've got 1.8 million and 19 FTEs out of our staff, largely through attrition, partnerships, and purposeful abandonment and all the crazy making business of business we used to be in. Um, that's not without some pain, but when we can show new and better results to both our board, our alumni board, our members, and our donors in the institution, they get behind us. And it's really led us to discover that alumni want to relate to the institution in a lot of different ways. And our goal in alumni relations is to get them engaged in the ways they find meaningful in the areas we can do well. And then we really leave it to development to engage in the conversations beyond where we are at this point. I'd like to see that evolve to a much more integrated, holistic strategy, and I think it will over time here. Yeah, I think it will too. Um, Keith, could you talk a little bit about your goals for 2015 and thinking about how they may have changed from your outlook at the beginning of 2014, about a year ago? Right. So I think it's fair to say in the past that this group has been probably more focused on the outcomes versus um, specific achievable goals uh, of the alumni. Um, so in the past, we, we said success was if we can increase the number of alumni they gave annually to BYU. Now we're focused on quality connections. Um, so there's a difference in my mind between goals and outcomes. And so we, uh, we're going to just be hyper-focused on quali building quality connections that we can measure. And so, you know, I made reference to CPI earlier. We're focused on, you know, identifying the success of our alumni. We are focused on how do we uh, find brand ambassadors that can expand the influence of Brigham Young University uh, in this world. And so, so the difference is, the simple answer is the difference is focus in the past has been more on desired outcomes, these economic outcomes. 
but really today our focus is on building quality connections that we can measure goals that are uh, that are achievable for this department. Keith, you know, sort of a follow-up, a question from Christine Tempesta on Twitter was about how do you take the CPI and but ultimately use that data to inform you know programs and activities and the sorts of things that you that you right. offer to your alumni. So, so exactly. How do we operationalize that information? I will tell you that really the, the, the whole purpose behind what we call RISE and, and CPI is all about how do we, how do we get to, to know our alumni better than we've ever known them before. Um, and, and so what we're doing is that we're building, um, we're building management tools, dashboards if you will, that allow us to take a look at the connection, the quality of our connection and the influence that we have not only by alumni, but by target segment. So we can say, we have the ability now to say how connected and how influential are we by college? How connected and influential are we by geographic region? I can tell you how connected we are by Provo, Utah, versus how connected we are maybe in, in uh, Dallas, Texas, or Seattle, Washington. Uh, we, are, we are now looking at how we strategically <coughs> use this information uh, to help our campus partners to help our alumni be more successful. The whole idea behind RISE, and I, I apologize, I've not really talked about RISE, is we believe that uh, in the end, by doing this, that all ships will rise with the tide. The fundamental belief we have is all ships will rise with the tide. So okay. we know our superstars, our rock stars, we all benefit. I think you're definitely on to something there about identifying rock stars and, and helping them propel you forward. Jeff, what do you think in terms of goals for 2015? How does your outlook look a little bit different from it did a year ago? All right. Rise with the tide. It sounded almost like he was from Alabama for a minute there. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to answer this in two ways. One, let me let me answer it in the context of what we're talking about at Pequod a lot um, in goals for 2015, and that's goals for our craft or goals for our profession. I think we as alumni relations professionals need to do uh, a better job at educating those who we report to and those CEOs of our universities on what value we give to the university. And so I think that's something in 2015 we've been focused a lot on and, um, and we'll continue to be doing that along with discussions with CAE and, uh, and CASE in particular. And then I think the second thing is is that we have uh, been at, at RPI in particular, we have been developing engagement scores and, and coding and tracking data and coming up with CPIs and all that good stuff. I think the, the real complicated thing is is how do we distill all of that great data into talking points and narratives that our vice presidents and the CEOs of our organizations can understand clearly so that we can accentuate the value of alumni relations. And so it doesn't get lost in the numbers, uh, but we use the numbers to sort of inform uh, uh, as best we can. So it's a data informed model, I think, uh, it, that I'm shooting for in 2015 so that we can better educate uh, the leaders so we can strengthen alumni relations, which I think we all can agree is important. Um, so those are kind of two different aspects, Ryan, for 2015. That's great, and I think you know developing a data informed model for assessing what we're doing and where we're going is, is crucial. Jade, what about you? What do you think? How have things changed as far as your outlook goes this year? Yeah, very similar to Jeff, actually. I think one of the things that um, is quite shift maybe from 12 months ago is that we're now thinking of the university community and kind of internal staff, our students as a constituency in their own right. So we're looking at really identifying their needs and going back to that idea of, kind of everything being mutually beneficial, that we actually have a much clearer idea and handle on what the university, what is really important to the university, what are the key issues that we need to be kind of standing alongside them with and addressing. So actually we know we're putting our energy in the right area. So for example, we've been supporting student recruitment activity kind of across the board in time. But actually in 2015, we have been much more focused on what are the really kind of tricky areas for the university this year specifically. What what are the kind of um, target regions? What are the target courses? What are the demographics that, of the alumni that we could be engaging with that would really support where the university is, is kind of has critical needs in terms of our recruitment? So that's been a bit more of a tailoring and, and also a shouldering of, of the university's responsibility 
together. And I think that goes back to what Jeff was saying really about being able to demonstrate the value very clearly to the institution. Um, I think maybe a shift that, that the US has embraced um, and much earlier than we have is actually we're now very focused on looking beyond our alumni constituency, both from a volunteering engagement perspective um, and a, a kind of donor base. So we're now looking at how we build our programs to be relevant to other constituencies, so parents, um, friends, local community. We actually have an amazing, amazing university, amazing school, amazing campus. Who else might be interested in it? And I think we've limited ourselves in the past by being maybe overly focused on um, just servicing and uh, working with the alumni body. So that's been quite, quite a shift, really. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right, to uh, to align university and you know goals with alumni engagement opportunities, and you know it's interesting how things evolve at the university, right? Because the university's goals change over time. But what happens if you've developed a really robust and mature engagement program, which no longer directly connects uh, with a specific university priority? You know, what do you do uh, if that's a popular program with alumni, but it's not necessarily connected with? A university priority. All sorts of interesting challenges uh, that exist as programs begin to mature. JT, a question near and dear to my heart is about digital engagement. I am a big fan of digital engagement as a the new frontier as it relates to connecting with alums who aren't necessarily able to travel back to the university or uh, come out to events uh, in, in, in real life. You can watch them on your computer and, and people can be with alums all the time. What's your sense as to the opportunities that exist in the in the digital engagement space here uh, for us alumni engagement pros? Yeah, I think there's an enormous amount of um, opportunity um, in this area. There's, you know, here's what we know. There's a flight at any given time. 90% of alumni career data in our systems is either inaccurate uh, or out of date, um, especially among these recent graduates that you're talking about. Um, Facebook, we know to be the primary space. You know, here at Indiana, the Facebook the sites that we manage, the Alumni Association, have over 100,000 interactions um, collectively over the recent years. LinkedIn is the primary professional networking space. We have 180,000 of our 600,000 alumni active there. Again, in that next in that next generation segment, predominantly. Um, People increasingly manage their lives via smartphone and tablets. Just go to an airport and look at everybody looking at a screen instead of each other. Uh, most institutions are pumping content into social media throughout with, but without an enterprise-wide strategy. So what that says to me is there's tremendous opportunity on the advancement front to really get our arms around this and move it forward. Um, what we're doing here is we are the lead, we lead the university's LinkedIn presence and we pump it full of career-relevant content that connects back to our programming and services. Um, we're partnering with uh, all sorts of organizations that do career counseling, career management, um, um, including eVisors to provide a platform to facilitate mentoring. In fact, it's our largest alumni engagement program right now that's attracted 600 people in six weeks to just be advice givers. Um, we're now moving into the other stage of that. Um, the other thing in this area that I think is really critical, we've got to understand that this is where, this is where content is king. And it's not, with all due respect, the dreck that we pump out about how many buildings we have, how many ranked faculty we have, but really relevant content to our alumni. So for example, when we offer a free career uh, salary assessment in partnership with Payscale, we're paying attention to who clicks through so we can follow up and say, if you're interested in careers, here's what we have to offer. Um, and I think that the, one of the things here, too, is that as we develop technology solutions, I personally feel strongly, and Indiana here is going to double down on this, that whatever web-based solutions we provide must be designed with delivering value alum to alumni, in terms of alumni to alumni networking. The alumni body of Indiana University is a vast human wiki, with more expertise to be shared within it than, 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 than we have made we're able to capitalize on. And I think there are solutions out there in that space that we could do this. Um, our alumni are not ATMs. They can just be cash machines for the institution. <laughs> if we want them to invest, we've got to invest in the technology tools they need to find one another and get the resources and power of that network activated to help them accelerate their careers. And if we do that well, 
we can pay attention to what content matters with them and continue to align our content strategies um, around relevant, resonant content, content that engages them. The, the, the great thing about it ultimately is this, and I'm sorry, I get, I'm excited about this because we're, we're in the last stages of formulating our strategy here, is that, is that um, one of the most critical elements to me about what we're doing here is if we do this right, it frees up the staff I have from labor-intensive, time-intensive activities of managing groups to really being able to be out there working to build relationships. Because what I will say is that in Indiana and large institutions like ours, we've been obsessed with going big. What we've got to do is go deep. I have more members, pay, dues-paying members, than I could fit in our football stadium. And we keep having this compulsion to get more. Well, if I couldn't fit them all in one place, why shouldn't I spend more time really deepening relationships? You know, remember in the United States that this idea of democracy that we created was started in the mind of one person who worked with five other people to write the Declaration of Independence and convinced 54 other people to sign this document under penalty of treason and death to create this whole tradition of giving and volunteering that's been distinctive to these, this country and spreading around the globe. So to me, technology has the power to do just that very thing and get us as alumni relations and advancement professionals much more deeply engaged with our connected people, as, as Keith is talking about, um, and working on the deeper engagement that Jeff is speaking of, and really leading the transformation of these institutions that, that Jade is working on. Awesome thoughts in there. There's so much opportunity in the digital space, and I could talk about it forever. One of the things we just recently did, and we're, ro we're rolling out our, our new content hub called Who's Network in a couple of days, but it's some of the content that we create, but it's also about formulating relationships with dozens and dozens of alumni thought leaders out there who are writing about fashion, about travel, about um, you know leisure activities, health and wellness, fitness. All these folks are out there, and if you spend an afternoon on LinkedIn, you can discover their websites, partner up with these folks, and create this really compelling digital experience where folks are interacting with thought leaders who are alumni. They're sharing your content so you get the social amplification component to it. There's a lot of great opportunities that exist if we're willing to share the opinions of our alumni and not focus solely on providing content to push out. Um, one thought that I had, uh, or I guess we'll take it since we just have about eight minutes left, we'll, we'll approach our last question here. Um, Let's talk about one year from now, guys. Jeff, you know, thinking about, here we are, State of Alumni Engagement 2015. What are you going to be saying from now? What are we going to be saying from now about State of Alumni Engagement 2016? Where are we going to be a year from now? Yeah, well, I mean, over my uh, you know twenty year career here, I find that we talk a lot about some of the same uh, same things. Um, but you know, one of the things I think that's not going to go away is this concept of we have finite resources at our universities. We're under tremendous pressure, all of us, to bring a return on investment for each of our universities and colleges. And so, how we're able again to communicate that that to our our leaders, I think, is going to be very important. So, how we communicate the message internally is important and how we communicate that message externally out to our alumni and our other constituencies that Jade was talking about, I think is going to be important. Um, two, I think that we need to figure out ways to um, strengthen our, our, our relationships in the short term uh, so that we can have these kind of pipelines that our development officers uh, hunger for for the long term. I think the work that we do on the engagement piece continues to be extremely important um, uh, for long-term success for our universities. And then just one programmatic thing I'll point out is I do think now that the economy is turning around here in the states, um, the career platforms that we have uh, are having a renewed attention. So I think those of us that have worked on building career platforms in kind of this lull, I think is finding it very uh, lucrative for us and our alumni because the career uh, programs, I think, in one year from now will prove to be a very important, if they weren't already, a more important piece to our alumni programming for, for the coming year. Keith, what do you think? Where are we saying a year from now about the state of alumni engagement? Um, for me, that's pretty easy. Uh, I, I would uh, reference Jeff's remarks and say, I just hope that whatever we say a year from now 
we don't say that that's the same question we asked 20 years ago. So that's number one. I hope that we're focused on purpose, that we all have a clear understanding what our purpose is. And I will tell you for BYU alumni, our purpose is simple. Our purpose is to extend the blessings of BYU and connect alumni. Beautiful. And JT, last word to you, sir. What are we saying about this business of ours in, in one year from now? I hope there's a lot of emphasis on a couple things. One is the success and results that we're having. And, and, and then the conversation about how we share that uh, with one another. Because this one of the things about advancement, particularly alumni relations, is in many ways we're not competing against one another. So there's a real ability to adapt and share solutions that work. Um, so I think that's something. I would like this to be a lot more solution oriented. Because I agree with Jeff. I tend to get kind of looking too much in the rearview mirror. Um, and the other is, I'd really like to see a growing number of people not only, say, focused on the successful tactics and techniques, but we really need to look and talk more deeply about how this all works. Because we, this, this field will not advance. It will become supplemented by the short-term avarice, and, and if you will, of tendencies of our institutions if we don't begin to really look at what are we doing, how does it work, both from an ethics and value standpoint, but also from, from a standpoint of the tradition and behaviors that we need to keep alive in, um, in our society. Because they are manifest in this lifelong historic tradition of alumni helping shape and represent the institution, both in their individual achievements and the time they give and the resources they provide to the institution. So we, so the ethics, values, underpinnings of this are as critical as not. And if you don't think I'm right about this, you just need simply look at where the field of fundraising was in the late 90s, when they felt misunderstood and marginalized. And if you look now at the scope of scholarship going on and how alumni are in, and others and donors are engaged in advancing causes versus the work that's done to really look at how people serve as volunteers, it's the scale currently tips a little more in the favor of fundraising. In fact, the CA Winter Institute, we're going to see um, work that the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy has done here in Indiana to document the body of scholarship that's been done in this field. And I know CEA is committed to sharing that with the rest of the field and inviting other scholars and other alumni practitioners into the conversation about how we work not only on how we take this tradition seriously. So that's what I hope to see, an elevated conversation and a lot more sharing on solutions that work. Great. And there was a question for you uh, with uh, about a couple minutes to go here, um, JT, from Christine Tempesta, about um, people, our, our employees here in alumni associations, university advancement, wherever, that feel as though social media is not part of their job. Uh, what do you, how do you uh, approach that problem uh, from an internal standpoint? And um, you know, what's the what's the digital literacy uh, change that needs to happen? Well, I think not everybody has to be on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn per se. But we all have to understand that we're all content producers, and we all have to be able to be willing to share our expertise and think about what we know and how to put it into the space. Um, that's out there because people are hungry for information and expertise that our staff have. And if we can be better at sharing that, we do it well. We get out of some of the low level work that we shouldn't be doing, so we empower our volunteers and all the grassroots technology assisted organizers to take on some of that work for us. So it's everybody's job, but what's really everybody's job is content and sharing of expertise to achieve shared aims. Great stuff. I want to thank all my guests, JT, Jade, Jeff, and Keith, for joining us today on Advancement Live. That was a great show. Thank you for everybody who watched and participated in the back channel. That was a really great conversation that was occurring on Twitter. Uh, it was a great pleasure to host this edition of Advancement Live. I hope you will tune in again next month as we have, I believe, a silo-busting student affairs month. So we'll have shows that are connected to uh, how university advancement alumni engagement work can be connected through the student affairs uh, work of our colleagues. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you.